how's it going i'm adam and welcome to my channel so you clicked on this video because you probably heard the cool kids at school or maybe a boss talking about film photography stuff like how the leica m6 is the best camera and how fuji pro 400h is far superior than portrait 400 hmm look at that i'm already trending on twitter hashtag cancel adam miss focus anyway i'll do my best to try to get you started on this beautiful and frustrating journey first things first you'll need a camera in the 35 millimeter category there are point and shoots and regular slr 35 millimeter cameras there are also range finders but i do not recommend that if you're starting out so let's forget about it just like my diet point and shoots are really simple it's just like the name suggests you point click the shutter button and the camera handles the rest. It's perfect for documenting day-to-day -day life and they are usually small and pocket size. It's perfect for starting out. Here are some point and shoots that I recommend. The Shika T3, Olympus Mu1, and the Canon SureShot Supreme. If you've been watching this channel a bit, then you know the Yashica T3 is my ride and die camera. I have taken it with me to Greece, Berlin, and even now for coffee. I have created some of my favorite work with it. If you're a lotto winner, here are some high-end point and shoots that I recommend. The Contax T2 that was made famous by Kendall Jenner, the Leica Mini Lux, and the Yashica T4. In order to put film in one, pop it open, put in some film, pull the spool towards the red line, close the back, and it should automatically wind to frame one. Don't forget to look up which battery your camera craves. It can't live without it. Now, let's talk about the downside of point and shoots. It's fully electronic. Sadly, these are pretty old cameras, and there will come a day where it simply won't wake up. And even if you plan to go to a repair shop, sadly, most places won't fix them, or it will usually cost more than what the camera is actually worth. So it's sort of like a ticking time bomb, you've been warned. Now that you have graduated from point and shoots and want to have more control of your photos, you might want to try an SLR camera. SLR stands for Single Lens Flex, sorry, Reflex. These are heavier and better built cameras than point and shoots and you are also able to change lenses. In order to put film in one, you usually have to lift this thingamajig until you hear a click sound. Open the back, put in some film, Pull the spool here, then pull the lever till the next frame. Once you see it's caught on the sprocket hole, close the back and advance to frame 1. Keep an eye on this thingamajig while you're winding till the next frame, cause if it's spinning around, right round, like a record baby, it means you've done a great job. And if it's not, then game over. Or simply try again. Here are some perfect beginner SLR cameras that I recommend. The Canon A1, Konica Auto Reflex TC, Minolta X700, and the Canon EF. If you've managed to sell your clockwork orange GITT Funko Pop, then I recommend the Leica R8, Nikon F3, F2, F4, basically all the Fs. They're great. Now that you know about SLR cameras, let's talk about lenses. The perfect lens for beginners and usually the cheapest option is a 50mm lens. Apparently that focal length is exactly what our eyes see. Trippy. I know. A lower the number means wider the view. Sort of like me every time I put on some weight. And higher the number, the more zoomed in the view. Every lens doesn't match with every camera, so make sure to keep an eye for that. For example, the Canon A1 takes FD lenses and the Leica A takes Leica R lenses. Where to get a camera? A classic place is eBay, but watch out because that site is addictive. You just might end up with more camera than friends. Just like me. A good place also is to check out thrift and pawn shops. That's how I got my first film camera. You can also ask your parents or grandparents if they have one lying around. Sadly, my family wasn't cool and they didn't take pictures. Now that you have your camera of choice, it's time to get some film. Perfect for beginners is Kodak Gold, Kodak Ultra Max, or if you simply just want to flex, then Portrait 400. If you're going through an RC phase, then I recommend Ilford HP5 and XP2. Or if you're simply a fan of prints, then Lomo Purple. Once you get your film, you will notice numbers like 200, 400, etc. That's what we call ISO, or for some reason, ASA. The higher the number, the more light we get, and we need light. Which brings us to a very important topic how to take photos. In order to take photos, we need to look at f-stop, shutter speed, and ISO. Seeing as though that the ISO is already cooked inside the film that we bought, we will be only focusing on two things, shutter speed 
You will notice numbers on the top side of a camera going usually from 1 to 1 1,000th of a second. We get to choose the amount of time the lens stays open. The longer the time, the more light we get. The shorter the time, the less light we get. And we need light. Now, if we go too slow, we risk a blurry image, and the faster we go, we get more of a sharper image. A good rule of thumb is don't go below 1 60th of a second. F-stop. You'll notice numbers in the front of your lens usually going from 1.8 to 22. The lower the number, the more light we get. The higher the number, the less light we get, and we need light. Going a lower number means less things are in focus, usually causing a blurry and dreamy background. Perfect for portrait photography. The higher the number, the more things are in focus, which is perfect for landscape photography. So choose carefully. Now that you know about the Charlie's Angels, it's time to pull out the light meter. Cameras usually have a light meter inside. You can see through the viewfinder. We set the ISO of the film we bought, let's say 400, and I also know I want most things in focus. So I choose F11 on the lens. And I don't want to risk motion blur, so I choose 1 1 25th of a second. Then I point at the thing I want to take a photo and half press the shutter. The light meter shows me that the image is too dark. So now I have to decide whether I want to lower the f-stop or the shutter speed. These are choices and compromises that you will have to make. It's sort of like a marriage. There is also a possibility that your camera's light meter might not work. But never fear cause App Store is here. Just simply write light meter and download. Just point, set the ISO, pick an f-stop and it will show you which shutter speed to choose. What to do after you finish the roll. Once you finish unloading the film, best look up online how to unload the specific camera that you have. You gotta get your masterpiece developed and give your family something to hang up on the fridge. Avoid places like CVS. It's best to go on Google and look for a dedicated film lab. After all, you'd want a professional handling your hard work. Don't forget to pick up your negatives and put them in a dedicated binder so you can look at them whenever you want. That's how I spend my free time. Nowhere I'd rather be on a Friday night. You can also develop and scan film by yourself, but that's a Breaking Bad type of process, and to be honest, I'm not really familiar with it. So yeah, I think that covered the basics. Thank you so much for watching, I truly appreciate it. I hope this video was somewhat informative and helped you out a bit. Film photography is a beautiful journey. Being able to capture moments and freeze time is truly something. So I wish you luck and joy. I also wanted to quickly say that having the most expensive camera doesn't automatically make you a great photographer. Trust me, I know. It's actually patience and practice, the two Ps. So pick up a beginner camera and just have fun and try to learn from your mistakes. I have shot with really basic cameras and to be honest, with those cameras I've created some of my favorite work. So keep trying, learn from your mistakes, and most importantly, have fun and take care.